Okay guys, it's GB here at Create. Just wanted to show you how to use the ATX power supply out of a computer. Um, the way you'll know it is ATX, it either has a 20 or a 24 pin plug and it's usually accompanied by this uh, this square four, four pin plug that also connects to the motherboard. Um, it also will have I don't know if you can see here in this bundle, it will have a green and a black wire there and it will start with two oranges or an orange and an orange brown. So the first thing we've got to do is uh, kind of free the harness here. So we'll go ahead and cut all this stuff loose. Better. Then the next thing we do is we go ahead and we plug the box into the wall and turn on the power switch. Now, as you can see, pretty much nothing has happened at this point. So that's where this green and black wire come in. You take your tester and you set it to volts and uh, make sure your box is turned on. Then you put um, one lead in any of the black wires because they're all ground and one lead in the green ones. And that green should read five volts and it doesn't. Let's make sure I have it turned on. And it's not plugged in. Alright, now that we have it plugged in, <laughs> let's go ahead and test it again. Black, green, 5 volts. Perfect. That means it's working properly so far. Then we take a jumper wire. And I guess I don't have one. So. Take a jumper wire and we'll jump the connection from black to green. You have to be kind of careful if you get it in the wrong hole you run the risk of burning your unit out but you really don't run the risk of hurting yourself. Um, now when you do that you'll see that the unit comes on. You can see that fan running there. And then we can go ahead and test a few things here. Um, I usually like to test here at one of these hard drive connectors. Um, stick a black in there. And then red's always 5 volts. 5.2 volts, great. And yellow's always 12 volts. So we're running a little low on one, a little hot on the other, but they uh, normally straighten themselves out when you add a load, so I'm not too worried about that. So in all of these wires, you're going to have a few types of voltages. Um, your oranges are going to be 3.3 volts. Your reds are going to be 5 volts. Your yellows are going to be um, 12 volts. And over here in the ATX connector, you're going to find a few more colors, and we'll go over those. Um, of course, your oranges are going to be 3.3, um, yellows are 12, reds are 5 volts, just like in the other part. But uh, your blue is actually a negative 12 volts. Um, and the green wire is, of course, the sense wire. When you ground it, it turns the unit on. White is not used, uh, so don't connect it to anything. Purple is a kind of a weird 5 volt wire. Um, it's not always the same in every unit, so don't use this one either. Um, and then gray is, uh, it's, it's not used, we won't use it, it's used to communicate whether um, the power is functioning properly between the unit and the uh, motherboard, so we're not going to use that either. So, like I said, uh, you got a few voltages, 3.3, 5, 12, and negative 12, and they're the, really the only useful voltages. So the next thing we'll do is uh, we'll unplug our unit here. We'll go ahead and open it up and start cutting out the wires that we don't want. Now, a word of caution here. As you're opening this thing, make sure you are unplugged. Do not, do not, do not go into here with it plugged into the wall. That is a big, big, bad idea. Um, these things are not made like most everything. They're not grounded like... Uh, 
like you're used to seeing. Um, and so we'll go ahead and pull that off. Um, also, the capacitors in here hold a pretty nasty bite. So the whole time we're doing something inside this unit, we'll be using the one hand rule. And that means if we touch something, we are only going to touch it with one hand and we'll keep the other one in our back pocket. Um, so we'll go ahead and get these brackets free here. Okay. So I don't want, I go ahead and just kind of cut them off short and then we'll work on, you know, making them pretty here in a minute. <clears throat> just go ahead and work your way through these. Okay, this next part is the most tedious part uh, where we spend working these, working these wires out. Um, but before we dive into it, I want to go over what we're looking at in here, just so you'll have an idea and you'll know what you should be near and what you shouldn't be near. Um, this is the power switch here. This is the power connector. This is the uh, 240, uh, 120 switch there. Allows you to choose which country you're in. Um, and then, so power comes in and it goes over here. And after it hits the switch, I don't know if you can see this, but um, after it comes back through the switch, it'll link in right there at that fuse. Um, it'll leave the fuse. Uh, go through some filtering stuff right here um, and then work its way to the uh, bridge rectifier. Um, this is usually, I'm surprised to see a, an actual bridge rectifier in here. I'm used to seeing um, large uh, silicon diodes. There'll be four of them and that's what filters your power and stores it in these uh, um, electrolytic capacitors. Now these are the things that'll bite you and if they're big enough they can kill you. So be very careful. Um, what you touch in here. Um, these heat sinks are uh, part of the um, power conversion. Everything, let's see if I can get a good angle on this. Um, there's a transistor, uh, there's a couple of transistors right here that feed everything into this power transformer. And after it comes out of the power transformer, um, it comes out and is re rectified as DC uh, yet again. And um, the diodes are usually on this heat sink. Um, then uh, these filter capacitors here at the end are what almost always blows out in these devices. They'll go out and then they kill your diodes, which then kills your power transistor. So I don't usually bother fixing these. They're usually a giant pain in the rear. Um, but with all that being said, uh, let's go ahead and just start nipping out wires. All right, so as we go separating the wires, I don't want this uh, five volt purple. And the trick here really is to just cut it as close as you can and <clears throat> try to keep it out of the way of everything else. And every time you cut, make real good sure that you haven't connected it to anything else in the circuit like I just did right there. See how I needed to bend that 5 volt away from it? Um, now make sure you keep your green wire because that's what we're going to connect to a black here in a minute. So save a save a black and a green um, and then just go ahead and carefully nip out the ones you're not going to use. I've got most of the wires that I need out of the way um, cut out. There's a few more that we need to address, namely this green wire. That was the sense wire that uh, came into this jack right here. Um, so that will be ne need to connect it to this black right here. So we'll go ahead and do that. We've got that. Also, this brown wire right here is the 3.3 volt sense wire. Now, that would have been in our um, 
or main harness right there. Not all power supplies have this. In fact, most of them don't. Uh, but this particular one does, and it comes in. It always comes in on the side that has the double orange. So you just all you got to do is connect that brown wire when it comes back to the 3.3 volt where I cut these uh, orange wires back. Um, you could tie it in like you did here with the orange wire. I forgot to do it, so I'm just going to solder it in right there. Um, so this will make sure the unit comes on, and this will make sure that the voltage gets regulated. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that. Um, most of these power supplies are not this complicated. I just happened to pick a, a, a really good one for you guys today. Um, so we'll go ahead and get the heat shrink tubing on here and then... Oh, it's too hot. All right, now that we've got that all sorted out, let's put it back together and see if it uh, fires up. Um, just a quick review. You want to make sure that you get the... Uh, the green colored wire connected to ground here. If you have a 3.3 volt sense wire, it needs to connect to the orange 3.3 volt uh, power so it can keep up with the power. Um, and you can heat shrink your tubings and tuck them out of the way if you cannot, or heat shrink your wires and tuck them out of the way if you uh, cannot get down uh, underneath the capacitors to cut them. So let's get it put back together. Here's the power coming out. I only need a 12 volt and 5 volt, so we'll go ahead and turn it on. And looks like I've got the fan running. Let's see what the multimeter has to say. Should go ahead and put uh, 5 volts on red, 11.5 volts on uh, the 12 volt line. Looks good to me. Um, if this video helped you out, uh, make sure you subscribe and there will be plenty more videos. Um, thanks for watching.